Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well today. Thank you for stopping by to check out today's video. Rebirth of the Earth. Many people say that, including myself, but yeah, that's what I think about when I think springtime. The grass starts to turn green and grow. The flowers are blooming. The trees, the barks of the trees, you could see that the life is being restored. The color starts turning a more vibrant, in a way, shade of brown. You know, and... um the leaves start growing on the trees. It's just a beautiful time of year, and it's also like a transition. We get the heck away from winter. See you later. Thank God, right? And we're heading towards summer, but it's not quite summer weather, at least for us here on the East Coast. So what I've done is I've curated a list here of fragrances that best represent springtime to me in, you know, as it translates into perfumery. Now, I will say there, there are like two fragrances on here that aren't really like, they're, they're just fragrances that I really love and I want to talk about here. But for the most part, these are going to be fragrances that do represent springtime. And you guys are going to love this. Trust me. Stay tuned. Keep watching. I have designers and niche here. This is not ranked. I'm not going to mention anything in a specific order. However, I have two honorable mentions that just didn't quite fit the other in with the other fragrances. Kind of the theme that I was going for here. And those two fragrances are, well, let's start with the first one. Comes from Prada, and this is Amber Pour Homme. Now, if you are sick and tired of synthetic smelling shower gel-like fragrances, and you want something soapy, fresh, clean, yes, but you want something a bit different than that. This is it. You got to try this. It's awesome. Prada really does soapy fragrances really, really well. And this one here is a great example of that. So not only do you have that soapy, fresh, clean feel, you also have a bit of amber, a bit of vanilla, tons of musk in here, just to add kind of this fresh clean vibe about yourself this is something i would wear casually personally this doesn't really strike me as like something i would want to get all you know dressed up for now for those of you that work in, a, in an office and you're looking for that vibe because that's just what you want to go for go for it just to me this just doesn't strike me as such but anyway guys you want to know how much i really like this fragrance look at that dent i love this stuff it's really really good and the uh the second one here Again, it, it is a spring fragrance, but there's just so many other great ones on this list that it kind of just fell off by a smidge. It's H24 Eau de Toilette from Hermes. Now, before you guys tell me, oh, you should have went with the Eau de Parfum, man. So a few months ago, I was in a store. I sampled it on blotter, so never on skin. And I thought, you know, this is really similar to the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum I'm speaking of now that I don't know if I need both in my collection at the moment. So I, I will get it somewhere down the line, but for right now, I'm good with the Eau de Toilette. Now this one here, if you if you aren't aware of it, um, it, it it's a green fragrance. It, it just has this kind of green vibe to it. It also has this kind of cucumber water-like aroma to it as well. So a metallic stainless steel kind of thing going on here also. So really interesting fragrance i think it all comes together perfectly um another one another one that strikes me as a casual type fragrance really really nice stuff here definitely worth checking out hey if you do have the opportunity uh, like if you know that a, a local store to you carries hermes fragrances and you have the opportunity to smell both smell both side by side and see which one you think is better for you you can let me know down in the comment section below also which one you think is better but anyway Let's move on to the list. To kick the list off proper, as I love to say here, this come this fragrance comes from a house that you may not be familiar with, and hey, that is okay. That is what I want this channel to be about. Well, primarily, you clicking on this video, not wanting or expecting to see the same thing that everybody else is talking about. I don't wanna be like that. I want you guys to be able to discover new fragrances of course i'm going to talk about things that you are familiar with just in a moment here but for now let's talk about this brand here tempest vite small niche house coming out of texas i will be doing a brand overview on them the uh the perfumer actually did all three of their creations 
His name is Kyle Mott Cannonberg, and I actually had the opportunity to spend some time with him, kind of pick his brain and things of that nature when uh, when I met him at Scent Explorer. Now, getting back to this fragrance, now that all of that is said and out of the way, you are going to see notes if you do your research. You will see notes like bergamot, labdanum, oak moss, um, linden blossom even, uh, pink pepper, sandalwood. Most of those notes I get, not all of them, just being honest with you guys, okay? What I get, and I actually wrote about this on Instagram, what I get is if you could picture walking on a trail just after this kind of light misty rain passes by, and now you're starting to smell all the aromas that surround you, the green grass, the oak moss that grows on the rocks, giving more of a green, again, attributing or contributing to this green feel, not like some of this some of these other oak moss notes that could be really challenging, like one in particular that I'm going to get to, uh, a fragrance actually that contains oak moss that I'll get to later on. But this captures spring at its finest. And again, just going back to that theme. So you have the greens going on. Then you're met with these beautiful floral aromas. God, so gorgeous with even a slight kind of animalic undertone. But yeah, and then you have some woods in the background and the base of the fragrance. Stunning, stunning stuff, guys. It's such a unique, interesting combination that works perfectly. I really love dressing this one up, wearing it into the office, wearing it casually. Um, I mean, you could tell by the, the dent. Now, this is a 15 milliliter bottle um, that I'll, I'm going to talk about a lot more when I do kind of the house overview and review all three fragrances. Um, probably next week I'll do that. But guys, they have samples available. Sample this house, fantastic creations, I'm telling you guys. But yeah, definitely check this one out from Tempest Vitae. This house here, you guys are all familiar with, I know. It's no secret, they are loved within the community. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, you name it. This house is loved. I'm a lover of the house myself. I'm talking about Chanel. This fragrance, however, however, does not get talked about as much as it should. This is a beautiful creation. I'm talking about Pour Monsieur. I probably butchered that, but damn it, I'm getting good at this French stuff. <laughs> this one here was originally launched in 1955. Now, this is the Eau de Parfum. This is going to be the uh, 2016 version. Uh, it's not a vintage bottle or anything like that. Just, you know, the version. But here you are going to get Sicilian lemon, my favorite type of uh, lemon. Lavender. You have a bit of spiciness coming from some nutmeg and vetiver. Now... I don't get the vetiver per se. I just kind of get this like woody aspect from it. But this one, I, I want to say if memory serves me correct, and we know my memory sucks, but if memory does serve me correct, this is classed as a sheep or woody. To me, I get more of a fougere feel, but not quite a fougere. Somewhere in between like sheep and, uh, and fougere. So maybe that's why they were like, well, it's got to be called one or the other. But anyway, this is just an elegant refined gentleman's fragrance it is a fougere that anyone could wear there's no sometimes we talk about you know mature leaning fougeres this one does not lean mature in my opinion and in my experience this is something i could recommend to a college student all the way up to somebody that's uh um well not a college student anymore somebody my age you know 30 in your 30s, in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever. You could wear this stuff. You see, I was scared that I didn't want to discriminate against any age groups. You know what I mean? But yeah, a dapper regal fragrance this is. And uh, I absolutely love it, guys. If you have the opportunity, definitely check this one out from the House of Chanel. Paul Monsieur. Next, we're going to uh, a fragrance that received a lot of love towards the back end of 2022 and some, you know, some love this year too. And that's Blue Noir Parfum from Narciso Rodriguez. So, yes, this one here composed by Sonia Constant. Fan, oh, I'm going to spray this one. I, I just, guys, I love it. So, so much. That beautiful iris here. You have woods. You have suede leather. This stuff is great. This is an awesome office fragrance. I This is going to be great for uh, date night situations this year. Because, you know, it has those notes that are so... so 
so pleasing, right? They're, they're mass pleasing and, uh, they just work together so well and it's an attractive smell. It's an alluring smell, you know, and, um, my, my lady, you know, my girlfriend, she loves this one on me and I love wearing it. Now I did mention office. So anyway, office fragrance, office scenario, because it does sit pl pretty close to the skin. It does. And that's what I like about it. And that's why I like and enjoy wearing this one into the office because it's not projecting. You don't have to worry about offending any of your colleagues, you know? That's one thing that I appreciate uh, about this, amongst many other things that I appreciate about it. But fantastic fragrance, guys. If you're looking for a new iris fragrance to add to your collection, or maybe you're not the biggest lover of iris and you're looking to get into iris, here's a good place to start. Narciso Rodriguez, Blue Noir Parfum. I just did a first impressions video not too long ago on the channel. This one here is Guapo from the house of Aaron Terrence Hughes. If you haven't smelled this, the best way I could describe this is kind of like Leighton meets Sauvage done better in my opinion. So here you have that green apple, you have woods, you have ambroxan, you have vetiver. It is this kind of, this combination of just beautiful citruses amongst woods and some ambroxan to give it some push and lift. <sighs> this stuff is so good. It's intoxicating too. This is going to get you attention. If you're one that loves compliments, this one garners many compliments. I'm talking about people you work with are going to love the way you smell. If you have a significant other in your life or somebody that you just started, you know, seeing or something like that, they're going to love the way you smell and strangers are going to be telling you how great you smell. Guapo is that good and it's no slouch when it comes to performance. So I do caution you, be easy, be cautious on the trigger of this one. Definitely worth checking out this spring. Aaron Terrence Hughes, Guapo. Next one. Now, this is another one for spring that I'll pull out for a date night. This one comes from City Rhythm. It's called Tempo. Awesome fragrance here. It has an interesting note of limetta, which to me comes across more like a green creamy cardamom is what I get. You have some sugar in here, which just adds this beautiful sweetness, incense, and uh, sandalwood is in here. So uh, this is not going to be a day wear, especially if you guys live in a very like humid or hot climate, tropical climates even. You are going to want to wear this at night for date night. This stuff is stunning. Absolutely stunning. I just wore this the other day for the first time. And when I came downstairs, my girlfriend's like, I don't know what you're wearing because I don't recognize that. But you smell really good. It was tempo. So, yeah. I, but, you know, I think this is unisex. I would say for uh, the 3.2% of you, uh, you, you ladies out there in the audience today... I would say you can wear this, but definitely sample it because to some of you, it may lean a bit on the masculine side, even though there are some sweeter notes and it does have a sweet, you know, kind of aroma to it. I would still say sample it because I do think it goes both ways um, in that it's unisex, right? So that's Tempo from City Rhythm. Here's another designer fragrance that you just don't see talked about often enough, and it's a great one. This comes from the house of Dior, and this is Bois d'Argent. So a good friend of mine and a good friend of the channel, Rudy from Time to uh, Musk Up, he recommended this fragrance to me, and I was glad he did. I absolutely love this stuff. You can see the dent in there. I love wearing this casually, love wearing it to the office. So this one here has a bit of an iris feel to it, and I believe they actually use iris absolute here. Now, in uh, contrast in that, there's going to be some other floral ingredients. There's definitely some blonde woods. I really think they're using silver birch in here. I could be wrong, but it's just this fresh, woody fragrance that may have a touch of incense to it, but it's not like an incense bomb. It's not something that's going to overwhelm. It has vanilla also. And I'm reminded of that vanilla because I could smell it kind of wafting in the air here. Man, 
So beautiful, such a beautiful fragrance. And again, when I think springtime, I think woods, you know, when it comes to perfumery. And I had to include this because I just discovered this towards the end of 2022. Had to include it on the list because right now, uh, this is just, this is one of my favorite designer fragrances to wear because not only is it a beautiful smell to me, it's, it's let's face it, all of its ingredients, I love, right? That's part of it, but it's so versatile. I could wear it casually. I could wear it in a suit and tie. It, it just, it fits the mold. Wherever I need that mold to fit, it, it fits it, you know? Guys, this stuff is great. So definitely get your nose on it. By the way, I know there's a few vintage heads out there that are going to ask me. This is a, a current formulation, so nothing vintage here. Um, one that sits pretty close to the skin, by the way. This one does sit close to the skin. It doesn't project um, that far, but this is going to give you great longevity. So it's one that does last all day, at least on my skin it does. You know how the skin chemistry goes, the skin chemistry thing goes, but... This is one you can be a little, you, you know, you can you can be a little bit more heavy-handed on the trigger. I usually go anywhere from eight to ten sprays when uh when I spray this one on. But guys, Bois d'Argent, if you are a fan of woody fragrances, j sample this, just try it. It's absolutely beautiful. Again, it's Bois d'Argent from Dior, and I did forget to mention. This is from the uh, the Privé collection. Next fragrance up here, guys. Speechless. Speechless. You want to talk about a speechless love at first sniff? That's what Philosophicos Eau de Parfum from Diptyque did to me. This one, you are going to smell every facet of fig that you could possibly think of. From the, uh, the, the fruit itself, to the tree, to the leaves... You get all of that in here. This is a beautiful green, fresh fig fragrance. If you are a fan of fig as a fruit and you want to explore it in perfume form, you've got to try this. This one has been talked about. It's been hyped up for good reason. This is just a great fragrance. One that I'm going to be wearing quite a bit, especially when it gets a little bit warmer because I've been craving fig fragrances i love fig as a note and this is just this stuff is really really great you have to get your nose on it they're they're also in addition to fig there's also in the woods a slight hint of uh, pepper just adding a little bit of spice not nothing crazy just a, something a little you know just to contrast the composition <sighs> this stuff is so good guys definitely get your noses on Philosophicals Eau de Parfum from Diptyque. Now, this next one here, guys, this is a polarizing fragrance. And I will admit, I got a bit bored of this fragrance, right? The other day, I wore it and I was like, what was I thinking these crazy thoughts for? I'm talking about Nishane's Hashivat. Now, I know Hashivat X is coming out in that X line that they just um, launched at Excellence, but man... If that fragrance can top this, I'm going to be impressed. But anyway, this one here, you have a trio of citruses, most notably, or the most common note people talk about, is pineapple. You have loads of oak moss here. You have to be an oak moss lover. Again, if you have not tried this fragrance, it is polarizing. Don't blind buy this fragrance thinking that, oh, it's been hyped up and talked about. I'm going to love it. That's not true. You are not going to love something that many other people do because trust me this gets lots of love but then there there are a few people that just can't get on board with it i'm not in that crowd i'm in the love absolutely love this stuff how and where would i wear it? this to me has to be dressed up a little bit i wore it casually the other day just because i was craving the sim profile itself but i when I'm going out, like if I'm going to wear this when we go out to dinner or, you know, like if we go out to dinner to a bar or to a restaurant, I'm getting a little bit dressed up. I'm just going two sprays on this. Again, I have a, a kind of this like a date night fragrances video plan. I'm going to get a little bit more in depth there. But guys, Nishane Hashivat, listen, if you haven't checked it out, it's worth sampling. It's up to you 
to decide if it's worth owning in your very own collection, but it's worth sampling, guys. Check it out. Hashibah. Second to last fragrance on the list comes from the house of Zerzhov, and it is Renaissance. Oh, man. Instant, instant love for me. I actually spent some time with a decant, two decants, in fact, and then oh, I had to get myself a bottle of this. This is just an awesome, versatile fragrance. You have Pettigrain in here. You also have Lemon, Calabrian, Bergamot, Mint. Now, Mint can be a polarizing note in itself. Here, I like the way it's done because you get that minty, fresh smell that, that you know Mint can attribute to fragrances, but you have so many other things going on within the composition that Mint never becomes a standout. Now, I can recommend a mint fragrance within the Zerzhov line that is more mint focused, and that would be Torino 21. But this one here, for versatility standpoint, this is the better fragrance here. It's Renaissance. A great, again, casual, if you're having a, you know, if you're attending a summer wedding coming up, this would be great for that. Great for the office. Again, just very versatile very gentleman-like in a sense, but I think women could pull this off easily. So to me, I'm just going to call it unisex, but check this one out, guys. It is from the House of Zerzhov, and again, it is Renaissance. I've said it in a couple of videos that I did, a couple of posts on Instagram. I've been into my florals lately, guys, and this fragrance just blew me away. It was love at first sniff. Save the best for last, guys. Frederico Parfums, this is Blooming Amber. Wow. What a fragrance this is. So th the name is perfect, Blooming Amber, because that's what it is. It's a floral amber fragrance, and it has a bit of a classic uh, vibe to it. So if you're – I'm going to spray a little bit because I, I just I just love the, uh, the Sem profile. But <clears throat> if you are into classic vintage-style fragrances – this kind of has that feel to it. And I think it, a lot of that has to do with the honey note that's in here. But against that, you have mandarin, you have jasmine, you have neroli, you have amber, vanilla, and musk here. You get all that. And in fact, while I'm smelling it, it is that honey that kind of has this classic touch along with the florals. This is just a great fragrance. This is perfectly unisex. Gentlemen, if you're not man enough to wear floral fragrances... That's on you, not on me. That's a joke, by the way. I love this fragrance so much. Blooming Amber is the perfect name for it because it reminds you, or at least it reminds me, of flowers in full bloom. I love this fragrance. It's so good. Guys, everything here is worth sampling and worth trying. This one, for spring fragrances, for me, this takes the cake. Perfectly unisex. Anybody could wear this. Again, men out there, seriously, you have to be in the florals because this is a floral dominant perfume. Now, Neroli, another note that could be uh, very, very polarizing. Now, I'm not really sensitive to Neroli. And to be quite honest, I get more of the, I don't get that soapy Neroli. I get more of the floral aspects in Neroli. So that's something to take note of. But I know Justin Frederico does have uh, samples of this on his website. So you could definitely check. Everything here, again, is sample worthy. The, if I had to pick one fragrance for you guys to get your nose on, though, it's this one. It's Frederico Parfums Blooming Amber. Check it out. All right, you guys. That's my list. That's my time. Before I go, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button for me, especially if you took something of value, or even if I just entertained you for a little while, do that for me. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. Hit the notification bell, and if you could, share this video out to some other people that you think would enjoy my style of content. Until next time, guys, love each other, love yourself, and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Take care. Peace.